with the interest. Caro, the Tigers, after you've watched this one from afar, being overseas and then come back, did, did we let them get away with the nightclub fiasco a little lightly? Absolutely we did. There was so much strange messaging coming out of the club. There was no transparency, you know, and, and we know there was no transparency now because you don't just make a club, make a huge... Well, it, they called it a fine. It was a negotiated... It's not a fine at all. It was a, it was a negotiated donation to uh, Tomorrow Man. Tomorrow Man, it deals with masculinity, yep. I gather that it was negotiated by Richmond as much as it was by the AFL, knowing they must have known that Shea Bolton was in a fair bit of strife when the vision finally did, did emerge. And we still don't know just who so, at Richmond has seen that vision. But uh, my understanding, too, is that $10,000 of that amount will be put forward by the club and the other 10000 by Bolton himself. Have we, have we got time to have a listen to some of the messaging yep. out of the club? Let's start with um, the CEO. No, we'll start with the coach. Once again, I don't condone violence, but the reality is... You know, put anyone in that situation, they're going to stand up for their partner and their mates. And, you know, Shay was the same. They responded, they took steps. What they do to be inappropriate, and when you want to look after your, your partner, you want to look after your friends, and we don't, don't condone violence in any way, shape, or form. We understand why they took the action they did, uh, but we don't condone it. The $20,000, it's pretty steep. 20 large is, mm. <laughs> hurts any, anyone really, but um, I mean, it's finished now. Well, Jack, 20,000 large tells me that what Shay Bolton did was pretty serious so, and the club suggested it. Watching him on Sunday at Giant Stadium, Kane, and seeing how important he is to the club and seeing where Richmond is on the ladder, has his... Obviously, what he did that night cost the club in terms of win-loss? In terms of on-field, it's, it's hard to measure, isn't it? But he's been their best midfielder this year. I think he's, he's had a better season than what Dustin Martin has had through the midfield. So maybe there's one win in there. Is that the difference between top six and a home final at the end of the year? Possibly. I, I, uh, well, I get amused a little bit that Damien Harbour can come out. That was on the night the story broke that he went on Fox footy on AFL 360 and was so emphatic that the players have done nothing wrong. Now... It's not the first time the players haven't been completely forthright in an off-field incident like that. We've seen history a long way back to suggest that that's not often the case. So how the club was so confident that the players had done nothing wrong that night, um, it and did raise my violence, at the time. Condoning yeah. violence in any way, clearly Shay Bolton has done the wrong thing. We don't even know whether the third party involved is whether they even care about charging him because of what happened. No, no, the, and, he doesn't. The, the, the person involved doesn't want to And I think if, if Damien Hardwick and Brendan Gale did see that vision and yeah. whether they have, I think they'd have a very different view. So it, just to cap off on that one, I think what's really important is that Richmond, to me, and this is me just making a calculated guess, um, Hardwick and Gale commented on the situation after talking to the players but not seeing the vision. Now, the vision clearly depicts a separate truth to the truth of the players. Now, that's not saying that the players are lying. They were, and they were happy to make a donation. It's, it's saying that the players clearly have a different version of events AFL. to yep. what the AFL Integrity Unit saw on a very, very clear CCTV footage. I can understand Richmond doing with this, but why is the AFL... Just they so protective of their brand as well that they want this to go away. And also because Bolton, in the end, when he spoke to the Integrity team, was very honest. Mm. Um, but there was another player who's been mm. in strife at Richmond who was pretty um, impressive on he, Sunday as well. He was, Kano. What did you make of this? Uh, Tom Lynch out, Coleman Jones in, and he made a big impact, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He kicked four, and he reminds me a little bit of Tom Lynch. I, I think they're like it's a good position to be in, but I think they've got a big decision to make. So he's out of contract. Once Tom Lynch comes back, if he goes back and plays reserves, then he'll go. He'll go for more opportunity at Richmond. Now, Jack Revolt is out of contract. I just wonder whether there is a discussion that needs to be had with Jack, who turns 33 at the end of the year, almost like a Luke Hodge style, to potentially have a coffee with him, shake his hand, say, you have been an absolute legend of this club, three-time, all of that. We think you've got two or three years left in him, but we don't want to lose Callum Coleman-Jones. If you stay, we probably will. Is there an opportunity to be really mature about this? Send Revo. I think a, Hang a great on, sorry, destination. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just, 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 just let me finish. You're I suggesting it... moving on Jack Revolt from Richmond. I am. Similarly, like Hawthorne did with okay. Lewis, Hodge and Mitchell. And that I think went that well, worked... didn't it? Oh, well, for the players that left, it worked pretty well for Luke Hodge, who had another crack at a premiership. Now, I think... <sighs> so you, who would you rather have a 21-year-old 200 Mitchell was a relative disaster at West Coast, although he was still there coaching when they won the flag. You can keep them both, Kane, surely. You, you, Jack <laughs> well, Revolt's like, not going anywhere. If you're Callum Coleman-Jones, are you happy to sit... You know you're good enough. You kick four in a game off hardly any preparation... 
for another 12 months, which he will. You can't play three tools in that four line. You can't. She's so loathe this they'll, industry they'll sometimes. Him. He's playing one good game and you've already negotiated no, I, 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 think, I, I, think I think it's in, a in, conversation in, worth having. He's it, 33, Jack Revolt. Are they going to win another premiership? Probably probably not. Has he got two, three years left in him? Absolutely. And at a club like St Kilda, I, I think it makes sense. I, I, I think in Kane's defence, he's simply putting it on the agenda before anyone else will. I, I don't think Jack Rewald will leave Richmond. He's I, one I don't, of Richmond's I, great leaders. No, They'd I, never I, let him go. Hang on, Cara. And I'm not, I don't Hawthorne's think Hawthorne's list management that he over the past six years has been one of the worst I've seen in the AFL over that period. He's, he's simply making a point that at 33 and with a, a, a young forward that looks like he's got heaps of ability coming through, what's the type of discussion that Richmond and Rewald can have about the next couple of years. I, I don't think that's, it's that's just, unreasonable I think at all. It's, it's playing the boy at someone else's expense. Revolt, you, you love having champions stay and remain at that football. Yeah, and I think, I think you will, yep. by the way. Yep. I and think uh, I think Nan Curvis isn't getting any younger. I think he plays ruck forward in the next couple of years.